opportunity to have his best with you. You're now giving the enemy the best to have his opportunity with you. Amen. And so I want you to understand something in this season. Don't just show up. Show up to, to, to get in God's presence. To get in his presence. Don't just show up. Show up to get in God's presence, man. Because the moment you get in God's presence, there's something in your life will change. There's something in your life is going to shift. There's something in your life that's going to take place, and you'll be a better person. I think that we think that where we at, life is, 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 is fun. And I, I think life, you, you, you can enjoy life, but you only get one life. And I'm saying this, we only get one life. Why waste your life? Why waste your life doing something, doing, why waste your life uh, fighting with the enemy or, or, or serving the enemy? Why waste your life when you should do it, when you should just simply show up and wake up and ask God, what can I do for you? Then on top of that, why waste your life and why, why live your life in hell and then turn around, die, then go to hell? The older I get, I realize that life is is like a, I say it's like a game. You just got to play it to win. But the thing about, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some. And sometimes with life, when you start to lose something, when you lose, it feels like you living in hell. And sometimes our decisions, just like what we've been talking about in this series, the hall pin life, our decisions has put us in places where it's a hog pen and our, our life feel like hell. Maybe it's me. Maybe y'all ain't never been through nothing. Maybe you ain't never been through nothing. Maybe you ain't never had to go through anything, watching people. Like it's, it's, it's crazy to, to wake up or uh, start waking up, then you dread that one phone call. You lost a loved one. Or you the, you the lost a job, or you you struggling to do this, or there's there's something in your life that it takes you to a place where it puts you in a hog pen, and you feel like you're going through hell. Maybe it's me. You're dealing with COVID. You don't know if you're sick. Maybe it's me. Maybe the reality to me with life is important to me that I realize I don't take my life for granted. Because tomorrow ain't promise. And I'm just saying that tomorrow ain't promised. And I know at the Preston Old Church, our assignment is to go beyond our past. It's not to dread the old stuff that we had to deal with, not dread the, the things that hurt us, the hell that we had to go through. And I know that's, that I know I don't want us to stay put on that. But at the same time, too, I don't want to, I don't want to stay in hell, then live my life, then die, then go to hell. I don't want to do that. Because rather we want to, rather we can say that, and rather we could, rather we could debate the fact that if is God real, if God is real, and you believe that God is real, the devil is real. You might not see the spirit, and but, but yeah, let me say it like this: if we're saying that we are spirit living beings, and God breathed the breath of life in us, you best to believe that the devil is a spirit too. Wow, I didn't want to go that way, but I, I'm just saying it that way because Kelsey really kind of, thank you. I want you to continue to grow. And I know I've been, for a minute I've been fussing, but I think as something has shifted, but I want her, I want her to grow. But then Malik, Tariq, your man, Jules, I don't know where Katie at. Y'all can't show up and not grow. Now you can't show, you're not going to be, 20 something forever you're not going to be 20 something forever i wish i could have said that i was when i was 20 something and i wish i could have been like man i'm 43 you flip that around i'll be 24 and don't get me wrong i'm still young that's still you're still young we just had kids early but the problem with that is that our decisions 
you have to start making decisions that's not going to put you into a hog pen because you're not going to be 20 forever because eventually 20 going to start looking like 40, 50, 60. Now I'm starting to think I'll be 50 in some more years. After 50, you halfway to 100. And you'd have, lived, you'd have lived your life out and made some decisions. And here we go. And I'm going I'm, I'm to segue into the sermon and made some decisions that have caused you to be in a hog pen when you should have just, at 20, should have been a year, your years of grinding. Your years of grinding. And I'm telling you, the Bible talks about that. As, a old, as a young man, grind. As you get older, you start winding down that you have some to lift and kick your feet up. And by the time you, by the time your time is up, you can leave some, and, but you'd enjoy the fruits of your labor. You can leave some to those that are behind you, but you'd enjoy the fruits of your labor. So that means is this. Time is of the essence. Y'all always hear me talk about time. I love this watch. I don't care what watch. I go get y'all five, six thousand dollar watches. This two hundred dollar watch here. Oh, I love it. It does everything for me. It keeps the time. It keeps my track of my steps. I did five thousand steps already. It does everything. I love this time. Get you a watch because time is important. The more you waste your time, the more you waste time. The more you sit and waste time, you allow the enemy to get you distracted from what God wants you to do. So here we go. PLC Nation, we thank you guys for being here at the Preston on, on, on with us on the Preston on Church. Pre, uh, Preston on Church, let's give God a shout of praise. Jara, you are God. And I thank you. And the Holy Spirit just moved in the building. Amen. The Holy Spirit is moved in the building. We are, I am praying for a musician. Uh, PLC Nation, if you know a musician that's looking to grow with a church, do me a favor, inbox me. Preston on Church, we need to find us a musician so we can grow up this ministry. We can take this ministry to the next level, and Kelsey can have somewhere where she can go into the Spirit of God the way she want to. Amen? I'm declaring something great over her life. And I see it, and it's coming. I'm declaring something great over every it, it, the person on church, and I see it, and it's coming. I just need y'all to grab hold to it. I need you to grab hold to it. The moment you grab hold to it, like, pre, like priests, like people, the moment you grab hold to it, you're going to be so blessed. And I'm looking for the day we all could just walk into the blessing. Amen? Hog pen lifestyle point number three. Point, point, uh, point number three. Point number three. We finna work these mics out. Do me a favor, Tariq. Run up here. Scoot this thing this way. And then, uh, yeah, scoot this this way. Scoot that that way. That is. Hall pen lifestyle point number three. That's, this is important. Tariq, I want you to understand something. As regardless of what's going on in the situation, you're going to have to make your mind up that in this season, if you're gonna, if God gonna really use you, you gonna have to shift into something that's different. As a young man, you don't have time to be wasting time. You don't have time to be playing around because what God is trying to use you for, and what He needs you, to, what He want to use you for, and to grow your child, to make your child, make sure your child is at the next level. He needs to use you. But as long as you distracted. Your child is going to be distracted. You understand me? As long as you're distracted, your child going to be distracted. It's going to take a man. That's what the enemy wants to do in this season. He want to kill. He's trying to kill. And I'm going to be real honest with you. And I, I'm, I'm praying for a mixed church. But black man, he's trying to kill you. It's something in you. And I'm telling you, every black man in here, it's something in you, something in your genes that multiply over and over. And the enemy want to kill you. Trust me, the enemy is trying to kill you. He's been, he was doing it with David and Goliath. It was a reason why they trying to kill you. But the moment you learn and understand and get yourself focused, okay, hog pen lifestyle. 
And this is why I'm, I'm preaching this. And I want you to understand, I'm, I'm teaching this because I want us to go to the next level. PLC Nation, we love you. Hall Pen Lifestyle, Luke 15, 17. Woo, the enemy was in here today, though. But we're going to, we the, Kelsey, whatever you did, I thank you. Keep it up. Keep it up. We're going to shift this. Luke 15, we're going to start at verse 17. I'm reading out the Message Bible. I'm going to read out the Message Bible. And, and, and it's under my, it's under Ronnie, my sermons. Um, I'm reading out the Message Bible. And I want y'all to see this. I want you to see it. And we all know that this, we've been in this series with the prodigal son. And it's important to know that this young man here have his ways. He have his ways. Come back, come on, Malik, pull it up. There you go, son. We have the message Bible. There you go. All right. All right, message Bible. Luke, and I want you, did y'all go back and read this? Did y'all go and study this? I'm telling y'all, you got to study it. Go read it. Don't, don't, don't just hear from me. Just read it. And you'll understand what I'm saying. Luke 15, starting at verse 17. This is the message Bible. And I want y'all to understand something. The message Bible will loop everything into one. So the message Bible will tell you it's 17 to verse 20, but it does not have any numbers on it. So the message Bible says this, though. But get this. The message Bible says this. That brought him to his senses. Mm. That brought him to his senses. Now remember, he's in the pit, he's in the hall pen eating, eating, he's in the hall pen eating corn from the pigs. And he was sitting there in the hall pen, and as he's sitting there, he had to think to himself. And this is what it says: that brought him to his senses. He said, all those farm hands working for my father sit down to, to sit down three meals a day, and here I am starving to death. Here I am sitting here starving. He says, I'm going back to my father's. I say to him, Father, I sinned against God. I sinned before you. I don't, de I don't deserve to be called your son. Let me see. Go ahead, Malik. So I'm a, I'm a, I tried to end it right here. Now remember, message Bible loop it all together. But next week's sermon, I'm going to try to plug this in. Uh, he says, he was going to go back to his dad's house. He said, take me as a hired hand. He got right up and went home to his father's house. Now, Malik, go back to the top. And then I'm going to give you the title for this morning. Go right back up to the top. Go back to the top. All right. That brought him to his senses. That brought him to his senses. Okay? And today's title, title today, snap out of it. Snap out of it. We are in a hog pen. Whatever you got going on, whatever you're doing, whatever's going on with you, the enemy might have you on, may you have make you feel like you're struggling. The enemy might have you so dozed up, so high, so drunk out, so that whatever the enemy got going on with you, snap out of it. This that season, snap out of it. Snap out of it. And the only way you're going to get to your next level, you got to snap out of it. Understand something. He, he got you distracted. But if you distracted, you got to snap out of it. Okay? Understand something. Watch this. Because we have been going through this hall pen lifestyle story of this young man. As he goes to his dad and he tells his dad, I want my inheritance. I want y'all to keep reminding you that. He said, I want my money. I want mine. I want what's for me. It's not for you. And we know him as the prodigal son. We find him in the hall. And after, after going through all that, getting what he deserved, getting what God, getting what his dad gave to him, he goes and squanderly, he goes and throws it away, make it rain. So we know that so far by now. He, he goes and he makes, boop, 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 he make it rain. 
squander everything that he has, everything that his dad gave to him, he squandered it. Throws it away. Just like many of us, we'll get something and we'll just throw it away. Part of that is because when you get something, if you never had to work for it, you are now misuse it because it was given to you. Do you understand? You will find yourself misusing it. Come here, mama. I know you just, y'all, you dying to see Pop Pop. Oh, give Pop Pop a kiss. Mm-mah. Okay, go back to me, me. Go back to me, me. Go, go back to me, me. You just had to. You just had to. Okay, go back to me, me. All right. Now, part of that is because we can, we, we throws it away. We tip throws it away. And as you can see that this young man taking everything that God, everything his dad gave to him and threw it away. Everything that God gave to you, sometimes we misuse it for stuff or money. But how about your life? How about your life? How about your life? How about when you waste your time with your life and you throws it away? You, you throws it away. And if you're wasting time with your life, you, gonna, you, you, you let it go. And God is saying in this season, you can't do that because you find yourself in the hall pen. After discovering, after discovering and finding himself in the hall pen, he now, he now, we now realize that in the midst of discovering to get to the hall pen, we realize that he's now living in a toxic environment. Last week, we discovered that toxic people can get you to become toxic environment. But can you do me for a favor? Turn it down. I can hear him. It, when you're living in a toxic environment, you now have either dealing with five people, and I realize it's either, and I didn't catch this, but I said it, it's either you that's toxic or the people that's around you that's toxic. It's either you that's the one that's toxic but it's the people look at your neighbor and say, are you toxic? Look, t- are, you to- are you the toxic one? Let's, let's be real. Let's be real. I want you to understand something because I, I, I'm, a, I'm trying to, I got to speed through this. I want you to realize, I want you to hear me out because you have to touch your neighbor and look at your neighbor. I know we're in a mass environment, but you have to realize, you have to know, are you the toxic one? Are you the one that's the, the, the drainer? Are you the one that has that that's giving me bad vibes are you the one and so what you have to realize that the toxic that he finds himself in the hall pen now eating with the pigs and you don't you have to realize what you put into your body can become toxic you got to be careful what you got going in that's why i say you better check your neighbor are you the toxic one or you the one that that's one be like yo Every time I get around you, you either drain me or you distracting me or you manipulate me to do something. You throwing some vibes at me. And so that's the thing. You have to learn to knock out the vibes. So we discover that he's in a, in a hall pen and he's toxic. We, we discover that most people live in a hall pen that's toxic. Whether you like it or not, some people is either you or them. It, it's either you that is either that you the toxic person or you just you know you know you just like your people that's around you. I, I'm I'm to go there. I'm trying to go there with you because you I have to show you that you have to snap out of it just to get to what God has for you. The reason why you are still living in the hall pen, you keep lying to yourself. I had kept saying that. I'll keep replaying it over and over and over. We keep lying to ourselves, and here's going to be my first point into, into this. We keep lying to ourselves, and but we think that we're lying to others. And that's the key. That's the point. That we think that we're lying to others, but you're really lying to yourself. And you have to be truthful in this situation. Let me, I, I'm really trying to walk through this because I really want to go ahead, go with it. But I want y'all to understand in order for you to come out the hall pen, you're going to have to snap out of it. And the only way you're going to be able to snap out of it, here's the first point, you're going to have to, come with me Malik, be honest with yourself. Ooh, let's go Ronnie. You're going to have to be honest with yourself. 
where you, where you, where you sin is not where God created you to be. You got to be honest with yourself. And the biggest problem with that, a lot of us are not truthful with us, with ourselves. When you're so not truthful with yourself that you're telling, you're trying to convince somebody else that the lie that you're saying, this is right for me. Knowing that God never created you to be right there. When he came to his senses, the text says, when he came to his senses, that even the help, he had to be honest with himself. Even the help that's at my daddy's house has more than me. And the moment you be honest with yourself that even the people that you're around, even the, pe even the people that's supposed to be Lord in you has more than you, you got to be honest with yourself. Yeah. Yeah. That's the problem. When you be honest with yourself, knowing that you're operating in a place that God never created you to be, you know you ain't supposed to be. You know you're supposed to be more responsible than that. But you being so fake by saying, well, now that's not for me. That's not what's deserved for me. And God is saying, if you got to be honest with yourself and try to misuse the truth, not misuse the truth by giving, by telling somebody else that's saying, that's trying to hold you accountable, you saying, no, nah, no, nah, you can't hold me accountable. Because you're not honest with yourself. When you're truthful with yourself, it shines a light on the reality that what you've been doing is wrong. When you're truthful with yourself, it shines a light on what you're doing, that, that, that knowing that whatever you're doing is not like God. And the moment you're truthful with yourself, the moment you start being truthful, it shows the reality that everything that you have been doing wrong, oh, man, this is not what God wanted me to be yet. The, the young man said, even, it came, he came to his senses. He said, even the help has better, even the help got more, more, more than me. That's crazy. Why? Wh when, when you have, when you know God never created you to be in that place, and you gonna see it, man. I know. I know this ain't be, this the best it get. I just know it just can't be. Let me tell you something. I'm be honest with y'all. I said this story once before. I remember going through a lowest point in my life. I probably was about 18, but, but I was staying with my parents, and my car was on. It was on bricks. I didn't have a job. Everything was just going crazy in my life. I'm talking about I'm 18, 19. My, my, my wife, which was supposed to be my girlfriend, you know, at the time she went to prom with somebody else. I'm being real with y'all. I was like, man, this is crazy. Like, I'm, I, that's right. I didn't have it together. That's the truth. Let's be real. I didn't have it together. And my life was at the, I was at the lowest point. And I remember being at a club at a hole in the wall. And I said this once before. And Lenny Williams came on. And I'm being real. And the song came on. Girl, you know I, 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 I love you. And I realized, and you have to think about it. Here I am, I'm 18. And, and don't get me wrong, I grew up off the song. But that wasn't a song. That, that was not a song that I really grew up on. And I'm sitting here whining, just like, girl, you know, uh, but you understand, and God had to, I, God, I really had to snap out of it, because God said, what are you doing right now in this season? Okay. What are you doing when you in the hall pen right now in this season at your lowest point? Snap out of it. That's not what desire I have for you. And the problem is we get so low at the lowest point in our life, at the lowest point in our life, and we start whining, complaining, it's not for me, everything's going wrong. But you're in the hall pen, and watch this, I couldn't blame nobody else but myself. I had to be honest with myself. Ronnie, get up, because you're in a hole in the wall, and this not even your age group. That, that's just crazy. That's not even your age group. Why are you in the hole in the wall? Oh, my God. The reality is shine the light on the truth. Yeah. It's the truth. When you're honest with yourself, you now put your heart into stubborn. When you're not honest with yourself, you put your heart into stubbornness. Uh. When you when you sitting there lying to yourself, now you become stubborn. You become stubborn. I'm not going to do what nobody. You, they telling you you're doing it wrong. They saying this is not for you. This is not the way it's supposed to go. You, they, you're telling yourself you're in the hall pen and you're saying, well, this is, this is all I could get. This is this the best for me. And God is saying in this season, that's not what I desire for you to be at. Yeah. 
and you now become stubborn because you're not being honest with yourself and you're lying to yourself and your heart becomes stubborn. Mm. Okay, Isaiah says it like this. Y'all don't believe me. Y'all don't believe me. Y'all, y'all have to understand this too. I can preach, but I want to give you a Bible, biblical Bible sense. That way you can, there's a scripture that you can go off of. And if the Bible is what we're walking by, I want you to be able to walk through it and say, okay, yeah, I, yeah, I did just mess up. Until you be truthful with yourself, be honest with yourself, you'll never know that you messed up. And so the text says this in Isaiah 46. He says, listen to me. Listen to me. This this is what God's saying. He says, listen to me. You stubborn hearted. You, you You who are now far from righteousness. He said, you stubborn hearted. When you become stubborn hearted, you now, you now become far from righteousness. Everybody want to be right. Everybody want to find themselves in justification. Everybody want to be in a situation where I feel like I'm good. I'm doing the right thing. But when you become stubborn and start talking, I'm not doing that. They can't tell me what to do. Why are you talking to me? They, I'm grown. That's how that's I do that. I'm grown. We snap. I'm grown. You can't tell me what to do. I'm doing this. But you now become stubborn hearted. Because as a man or as a woman, if, you, if no one can teach you to do something right, you now become stubborn hearted and you find yourself in the hall pen. Yeah. Can you imagine that this young man now had all had everything had everything that his dad gave him, and he out boom! I'm throwing and making it rain. I'm gonna do what it do. I'm gonna make it rain. And when he found himself in the hall pen, now he's sitting there like, man, I, I, they they can't tell me nothing now. You even with the slot, but they still can't tell me. I'm going back out. He even I'm gonna make some money. I'm gonna go back out. And his heart became stubborn. To it now broke him down to his knees. To it now became oh. It brought him to my senses. It brought me to my sense. This ain't, this ain't, this ain't right for me. Because watch this, when you stubborn, when your heart is stubborn, it become like a stone. It's a hard stone. And you, you don't want to listen. And God is saying in this season, you got to listen. When you should be living your best life, I'm living my best life. Ooh. I ain't nothing left. Look, when you should be living your best life, but watch this. You're living your morals, your morals become unright. When you should be living your best life, you start losing your morals and your justification. You now start, you become stubborn, but you just settle for anything. See, that's what happened. He was stubborn. He, he was stubborn, and he started selling for the, the coin. He started selling for the pig food. He started selling. And the moment you start selling, you become, ooh, you can't become stubborn. Your heart becomes stubborn, and you mad. It's like a stone because you refuse to be honest with yourself. You refuse to be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. You, if you're not honest with yourself, you're not going to come out the hall pen until you're honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. You, the thing is that the moment you can be honest and say, I'm wrong, oh, I'm wrong. It take a real man to say, man, I messed up. I really, I really messed up. It, and this is what forgiveness is. The moment you can say, God, Forgive me for my mess up. Now God can walk. Now God can change your direction. That's the whole part of sin is. When you, of course you're going to mess up. We all going to stumble. The Bible talks about a man stumbling at least, at least 7 to 12, 13 times, at least 54 times. The Bible talks about a man stumbling, but when you stumble, you got to get back up. That's a righteous man. That's what makes you righteous when you get back up and say, I messed up. I'm honest with myself. The moment you can be righteous and just trust me. As I was sitting there, I was like, man, God, man, I'm not finna do this no more. I mean, I'm finna go make something happen. I need to fix my car and I'm finna go get my girl back. I don't know what y'all talking about, but I'm going to get my I'm gonna get my girl back. And everything that gotta line back up. And this is the part right here. This is this is where I had to be honest with myself. Because I played drums. Ooh, I was cold. Mm, I am cold, like, and I had to tell myself, God, if you get me out of this, I'm gonna give everything back to you. And every time you see me, I gave everything back to God because I was honest with myself. You gotta be honest with yourself. The moment you mess up, oh God, I messed up, but forgive me for my sin. 
and help me get to another level. But if you're not honest with yourself, you're thinking, I'm grown. I got time. Ooh. You now become stubborn. The text, say, the text says this, that he started to th think to himself, man, even the farm workers got better grind than me. They can eat good. Even the farm workers eat three times a week, three times a day. The farm workers? They mean to tell me that, hold up. I, mean, I went from being, I went from being, being great, and now I'm down here at the lowest part? Oh, no, this ain't right. This can't be right. And here's my next point to you. You have to do a self-talk. Yeah. Come on, Malik. You, you got to do a self-talk. That's, that's another issue. We don't like to talk to ourselves. That is the problem. We spend so much time trying to hear everybody else. Oh, touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, do a self-talk. And here's the problem with this. Neighbor, the neighbor says do a self-talk, but the neighbor shouldn't have to tell you do a self-talk. You got to do a self-talk of your own. See, that the self-talk is, re is really this. This is the inner voice that's combined in, cautious, in a cautious thought of an unconscious belief and bias. Provided a way for the brain, for your brain to be to interpret and process the daily experience. What you going through right now, you should be telling yourself, you know what? I can't be doing that. I ain't doing that no more. This ain't for me. And the moment you learn how to do a self-talk, you won't believe what everybody else is telling you. You know if you wrong, man, I messed up. I'm being honest with myself, but when I do a self-talk, I, I messed up, but I'm finna come out of it right now. And that's what he did. He did a self-talk. He said, you know what? Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, you know, honestly, I'm gonna be real with you. It probably would have been one of those moments like, oh, 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 no, no. Uh -uh. This is not for me. And he had to do a self-talk. He said, even the farm hands have more time, have more, eat more better than me. And that's, a, that's what I want you to understand. The moment you have a self-talk with yourself, you, it, beco you be it becomes less about the experience that you're going through or what you're going through and more about the reality that's going to bring you back. You know the reality. You understand the reality. It's more about the reality of how do I get out of this when I come out of this. You, when you, oh, okay, okay, okay. When you do a self-talk, have anybody played basketball or football? Say, self talk. Say, when Malik get on the court, Malik, like, Dad, I can, I'm, I'm going to beat you. Malik already did a self talk. I can tell you, I'm not going to do all that running. I can, hey, I cross him up real quick. And, sh whoo, thank you, Sturf Curry. But understand some my self talk is this, Ronnie, don't you get out there, try to play all them different moves, because you're not 19, you're not 15 no more. What you need to do is lay back. You got a cool jumper, bam, hit him with the jumper, and I beat him every time. Because the self talk in me tells me to do what, do what God is telling me to do at that, tip, that particular moment right now. Now, the experience that I'm dealing with right now, I know where I'm at, but I know where God is trying to take me. It's more, it becomes less about whatever you're going through and where about the reality of you trying to come out. If you spend so, you spend so much time wanting advice from everybody else, I don't need advice from Jay-Z. I love, as I, I, much as I like Jay-Z, I don't need the advice from Jay-Z. Now, I can't get a little advice how to become greater, but my self-talk going to tell me, Ronnie, it's grind time. Because at the end of the day, Jay-Z up in the morning early. See, New York time is different from this time. They up early. They up early before, so I'm up grinding. I'm going to be up on New York time grinding. The stock market opened up early. And you don't have time to be slipped. You got to do a self-talk. That's, that's crucial to this. That's crucial in this season. That's crucial in this season. And the moment you do a self-talk to say, well, you know what? Mm-mm. That, that you're not going to outplay me. You're not going to outbeat me. You're not going to outbeat me. Yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. That, that's the thing. You're not going to outbeat me. And my, my, the situation with this is that too many times we want the voice of everybody else. And God is saying in this season, your voice is inner. It's your inner voice. The moment you get the inner voice, the moment you tell yourself to move, ooh, 
The moment you say, get up, that, that's the key. The moment you do a self-talk, the moment you laying there in the bed and you sitting there and you know you wasting time, do yourself a self-talk. Get up. That, that's the key. The moment you know that you're not grinding to make some money, do yourself a self-talk. Oh, Ronnie, you got to get up. You, you better post some more videos. Right, miss, you better post some more clothes. You got to do yourself a self-talk. Because you'll, you'll never reach the goal that God has for you if you're not telling yourself to do it. Or you waiting on somebody else to say do it. You better, the moment you know you're not being, you're not, if I'm not being a good daddy, Ronnie, you need to be a good daddy. Okay. I do myself a self-talk yeah. every day. What you doing? Have you, have you checked on Malik? Have you come? What, wait a minute. It's not that, that it's a self-talk. Because if I could preach to myself, you know how many times I'd have preached this sermon to myself? Huh? You know how many times that I'd have, I'd have rolled it down and I'd have preached it to my, I'd have preached, I'm on the truck. Ooh, right, you got to do a self-talk. In the name of Jesus, self-talk. And if you can self-talk yourself into something great, you can self-talk yourself out of something. And the moment you learn to do a self-talk, you won't set, you won't settle for less, you won't settle for nonsense, you won't settle for anything, you won't settle for the hog pen. And that's the problem. We've been selling eating dry corn when God said, I'm finna make you some cooked corn. I, I got some, I, I, I got some, I, I, I have some uh well, give, give me some crabs. I got some crabs and some lobsters for you, son. Self-talk. Ooh. You eat, you sitting there eating what the hogs eat. You even want the hog. Let me move on. Let me move on. Here's what. Here's the next thing I want y'all to understand. I, 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 I snap out of it. So I know I'm trying to teach this, but I want you to get it. Snap out of it. The moment you snap out of it and you do a self-talk, God's gonna take you to another level. And here's what. Here's the next part. Here's the next point I want you to understand because this young man was like, man, no way. Ain't no way this happening to me. I'm sitting there eating this nonsense with the toxic, and they eating better than me. But watch this. The next thing you have to understand is this, that you're going to have to take ownership. Let's go, Malik. You're going to have to take some ownership. Hmm. That's that. Take, take ownership. That's our biggest problem. You have to take the ownership for your mess up. You have, it, it, there's nothing, and I put that there, but God has hit me with this. The problem that we have, we don't never want to take ownership for nothing. For nothing. I don't care if it's a mess up. I don't care if it's an assignment that God gave to you. You don't want to take ownership. And the moment you don't take ownership, it puts you in a position where God has to take it away. And now you're sitting in the hall pen. You got to take ownership. I messed up. I done it. And when you're honest with yourself, you can take ownership. When you're honest with yourself and somebody give you an assignment, you take ownership with it. Because the biggest problem that we have is that if I give you something and you don't take care of it, you don't take ownership of it, you feel like it ain't mine. And this is what God is saying, that I gave you a life. I breathed into your nostril, and I created you to be abundant, to be more than abundant. I created you to be more than a conqueror, and the life that I gave you, you don't take ownership with it. You treat your life as if that, if, if you only, you have more multiple. You don't have multiple lives. You have to take ownership. And if you take ownership with your life, God can do more with your life. No one's, no, no, you, you could, of course you could grow up in the hood or in a hall pen. But when I take ownership of my life, that's only an excuse why I'm where I'm at. Because me taking ownership for what I have, taking ownership for my business, taking ownership for, for, my, for the ministry, it, it's going to take me having to be in a position where I have to know where God is taking us. And if I don't take ownership for it, God said, well, Ronnie, I need you to start the pressing on church. And if I sit and told God, no, I'm not doing that, I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't. If I don't take ownership for it, now you find yourself in the hog pen. And he, he, the, the thing about it, he had to take ownership for what he's done. 
And the moment you learn to take ownership, now God can use you. He said, well, you know what? I messed up. What I'm going to do is just go back to my dad's house and say, Dad, I sinned against you. I sinned against God. And that's the problem. We never want to take ownership for our mess ups. And we're mad at people because now when they tell you, look, I don't want to fool with you. Don't, don't come around me. You hurt me. And since you hurt me and you don't want to admit that you hurt me, you got to take ownership. That's the problem. We don't take ownership. We won't admit to our, we won't admit, we won't admit to our mess ups that we fell, and that's the reason why we fell in the hall pen. You knew why you fell in the hall pen because you refused to admit to your mess up. Right? Watch, watch this here. Your mess up or failure doesn't define you. And that's what you have to realize. Of course you messed up. Of course you fell in the hall pen, but that does not define you. It does not define you. The whole pen doesn't define you. Remember, the person on church is going beyond our past. Our past don't define us. It's you going into your future, but don't go into your future with a mess up. Take the ownership. Take the ownership. The reason why, reason why the hall pen, or the reason why you're in the hall pen, because you won't take the ownership, and you're going to have to snap out of it. You have to snap out of it. Watch this. Mistakes. You're going to make some mistakes. Watch this. I, um, I think y'all, some of y'all might not know him. My, uh, my law, me and my mom might know him. Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee. One of the baddest karate guys. In, well, I'm talking about before he died. He was bad. Ooh, come on with him, Malik. Bruce Lee. Bruce Lee would say this. Bruce Lee said this. Mistakes are always forgivable if one has the courage to admit that they, they made the mistake. The moment you find yourself with the courage to admit that, that you made a mistake, oh, that's when God can use you. That's when you can snap out of it. And the best way he did, this young man was like, you know what, I messed up. And I sinned against God. I sinned against my dad. So now I know I knew I messed up. And the moment you have the courage to say, I, I messed up, God, can you forgive me? I was bad. Can you forgive me? I messed up. I sinned against him. Can you forgive me? And that is the problem with a lot of us, that we don't want to take ownership, but we expect the people to forgive us. We don't take ownership that we messed up, but you're expecting those to forgive you. And God is saying in this season, if you really want to see us go to see yourself go to the next level, take the ownership. Because you can't snap out of it. You'll stay in the hall pit trying to figure out, trying to say, well, you know, I ain't, I don't, I don't want to do all that. They could, they could forget it. Yeah. They, I don't, they ain't talking to me. I'm grown. But you didn't take the ownership. And God is saying this season, snap out of it. Yeah. And the moment you snap out of it by having the ownership, by taking the ownership, you now can go to your next level. You now can go to your next level. You now can get to your greatest level. You now to go to a whole new level. The hall pen don't define you. And what I want y'all to understand, when you come out the hall pen and you take ownership, you now have to find yourself in a detox. I should have said that last week. You now should detox yourself because you, you don't want to go from the next level with toxic. Detox yourself in this season. And the only way you can snap out of it, you got to detox. I can't do that no more. And so here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I have to walk through this so you can understand what I'm saying in this season of deal, dealing with the hall pen. I, um, I, I could. I probably could. I'm going crazy. Mm -hmm. I don't do that. What I want you to understand, I want you to live in the next level, and I want you to go to the next level. So watch this. When you're dealing with the hog pit, if you don't take ownership in it, you're going to be stuck in it. But in order for you to come out, God is saying in this season that you're going to have to know in this season that now you got to be honest with yourself. You got to do a self-talk. So when the young man did this, he says, you know what, let me get up. And the Bible says that he got up. Went home, he was on his, he got up to go home. And he's, and this is the message, Bobby. He got up to go back to his daddy's house. As he got up to go back to his daddy's house, look, look, look what the next verse, and I, I didn't put it on there because I want you to give you a cue for next week's sermon. The next week's sermon, very simple. He says this, the Bible says, he was right up, the, he was right up, right up and went home. He got right up and went home, and he 
on, on his way, the Bible says this, he was a long way off. And what I want you all to understand something, you may be a long way off. This, 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 this is next week's sermon. I'm a long way off, but I'm going to get better. I'm a long way off, but I'm about to get better. I'm, a lo- I'm coming at the hog pen, and I may be a long way. No, nobody's thinking that you're supposed to be great right now. The Bible said he was a long way, but I'm, give, I'm, I'm on my way. I'm on my way to my dad's house, and I'm going to get better. And the moment, Jeff, because you're a long way, you got to make your mind up that I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I'm on my way, though. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. You can't find yourself in a position where you're not giving up. Come on, Tariq. You got to know in this season that I'm on my way. You got to know in this season that you're on your way. And the moment you're on your way, everything that you may be dealing with, and you snap out of it and get up and move to the next level. When you snap out of it and start moving, you'll be on your way. You may be a long way off. You may be, you may not have got there yet, but eventually, whoo, you're going to get there. Eventually, you're going to reach that level. Eventually, you're going to find yourself in a position. You're going to reach your dad's house. You're going to reach that level to your, your journey. You're going to reach that level to your next, to what you've been asking God for in this season. So I want to thank you guys because this now our time is up. I'm a, I'm a long way. But I'm finna get there. I'm gonna get there, and I'm gonna fix that. Keep that on your mindset because part four next week. Just because you you not there yet, you gonna get there. You gonna get there. And he got up, and this young man went to his dad's house. He's on the way. I'm a long way, but I'm gonna get there soon. So do me a favor, PLC Nation. Hit that heart button. Hit that like button. Share the page. Comment on the page. Uh, personal church, I want to make sure that we are in the house, that we making sure that we're reaching people and that we are introducing them to Christ. PLC Nation, if you're online and you know that you're looking for a, a church to, to come in and want someone to love on you, this is the place. As we reach this goal of being with the, uh, operating in the hall pen, as we go through this series of being in the hall pen, I'm declaring right now that if you think that you are in the hog pen, if you would just simply say, God, forgive me for my sins and help me, God, God, help guide me out of this, and God will help you out of this situation. And if that's you in the house, I pray that you would just say that same prayer, God, forgive me for my sins and help me to be guided out of this. And the moment you do that, Everything that you might have been going through, everything that you thought was wrong, we're not even worrying about that. We're just going to walk this journey and say we're on our way. It's a long way, but we're on our way. So let me pray with you on today. And I want to pray that this prayer that you will find yourself in a position that one, even though it may look bad in the hall pier, that you're going to find yourself, find yourself snapping out of it. And you know whatever the enemy said that was supposed to be wrong, you're going to find yourself snapping out of it and walking to God's greatness. Amen? So in the name of Jesus, I declare, amen, that you will just, just, just shift into the atmosphere, God. I declare, God, that you will just move on someone that think that they are operating out of your season. That you will shift into their life right now, God that you will move into their life and then begin to change everything that the enemy thought that he messed up. That the enemy put in a mindset and said to them, this is over. And that we're the, that, that is over. And I declare right now that this is the new beginning for them right now, God. So God, I declare right now that you will just move in the house. Anyone that's in the house that's in need of you, God, I pray right now that you will just put your hand of protection on them. Anyone that's on PLC Nation, that you will put your hand of protection on them right now, God. Give them the mindset to snap out of it. Take ownership, God. Do a self-talk, God. And then, God, I declare right now that you will just move on them right now. So in the name of Jesus, I declare amen. Amen. So personal church, let's give God a shout of praise. Let's give him a clap of praise. 
This is important. This is important how mama. I want y'all to understand something. Tithing, sowing into the ministry is important. Sowing into the ministry is important. And here's the thing why I want you to realize that when you sow into the ministry, you help the ministry go to the next level. And uh, you're going to help them. You help the ministry go to the next level that we can reach others. Then not only sowing into the ministry, that if you're giving time, talent, treasure, there's some things that need to be done as we come in. And sometimes as a pastor, I can't do them all. I can't do it all because I have to prepare. And it, stunts, it stops me from being able to teach out what God is saying. I have to be able to go over my notes. That's why it's important that when I say, hey, let's get it together, that if you're giving your time, talent, treasure, don't wait on me because I can't do it. I'm not an octopus. I, I don't have, I'm not cloned. And I have to be able to study God's word. Amen? And so soaring your time, talent, treasure is important. Then also, this is, this is important. Malik, put the, put the, the text to give up. I want to make sure that we are texting to give, but also downloading the app. Download the app. Uh, uh, you can text to give at 844-916-2981. But download the app so that we can stay in tune with what's going on with the ministry. You can go to the app, and once you hit the app, you can find out what we're doing. Amen? And that's important. Because you want, I want us to stay in tune. I want you to stay in tune, and you can sow, give, and everything that's on the app. Your your name will be in the roster on the app. I don't have to do all this paperwork. I just want to make sure that we are in a position where I could do ministry and do ministry at the next level. Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. So make sure that you download the app and then go back to the screen, Malik. Then make sure that you when you what you see is. Uh, make sure you follow and watch us live. PLC Nation, we thank you guys for following us and watching us on Facebook, Instagram, and on YouTube. As soon as we leave here, it's already on YouTube, and some clips will be playing on Instagram. Amen? So as we get to close out, wife, if you want to grab a mic and close out, or, you know, I would thank you. This hog pen lifestyle, I had to take it. I'm taking it slow. On, I took it slow this morning. Because I want y'all to realize we have to snap out of it. We are living in this hall pen, and you're in a hall pen, and you're in this hall pen for your decision making. You're in a hall pen because things might have happened, but you got to know, you got to play the game and play the, play this life game as if when God gave it to you, you can't throw it away. You only get one life. You only, that's Nas right there. But I said, I only get one mic. Nas, I said, I only got one mic. Mimo, I'm sorry. Nas is a rapper. He he should know Nas. He come out of New York. It's a rap, he's a rapper. Nas, I said, I only give him one mic. You know, I, I know a lot of rappers. I'm a, I love hip-hop. I'm sorry. I love hip-hop. Um, I'm on my way next week. But I want y'all to understand something. The value uh, let me, okay, I'm 12, the value of who God, what God created you to be, and I'm, I'm going to quote another rapper, and I'm going to put it up for you next week. The value of what God, who God created you to be, you have to understand something. When you understand the value of what God created you, your price of who you are goes up. And if you don't understand the value of who, who God created you to be and what God created you to do, what God designed you to do, you don't, your value gonna always be down. So, um, Fat Joe, they call him Joey Crack. Fat Joe, uh, they was doing Versa between the locks and the locks and uh, Dipset. Okay, these are rap rappers. <laughs> I'm sorry. And, and here's the thing, well Fat Joe just did another Versa. He did a Versa between Ja Rule and, and here's the quote that I, I kept hearing with, with, with Fat Joe. The quote was very simple, that yesterday's price it's not going to be the same as today's price. You understand what I'm saying? Wifey, get that, because you have to understand. Listen to me. Yesterday's price is not going to be the same as today's price. When you know your value, whatever happened yesterday is not going to be the same price as it's going to be higher, because I know my value. So don't take it for granted, because when I know my value, my, I, I'm not going to lowball about my value. You understand what I'm saying? The person on church at the beginning when we started, yesterday's price. 
versus today's price. You understand what I'm saying? Malik, yesterday's price versus today's price. When you know your value, when you became better over time, doing better at what you do, and you know your value.